of God that makes us new. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm Alan Lehman, the pastor here at uh, Trinity Church, and we're just glad to see you this morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we're glad that you're a part of our worship celebration today, as we can um, really kind of jump into this August theme of nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ not even COVID and the sequester and uh, all of the other uh, unrest and distress that we are living with right now in our world. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. And so we're celebrating this month, celebrating the ways in which we are maintaining our connections. Uh, and today we're celebrating some of the mission work that we do with the Place of Miracles Cafe uh, as one of our features. I hope you caught the video uh, um, about Miracles Cafe and their ministry and how we participate in that uh, before the service. And if not, I hope you'll watch it uh, afterwards. Some shout outs this morning. I want to thank uh, Gary and the gas Grass Cutters. Sounds like a 60s band, doesn't it, Tim? Gary, Gary Potter and his crew who uh, have made the yards here that had really gotten, um, uh, with all the rain, had, are very lush, shall we say. Uh, but this morning they look beautiful and we thank the crew for doing their work. Um, this, um, this, I want to talk a little bit this morning about pictures. Uh, two things coming up the last week in this month, but you need to act now. 
First, on the last Sunday in August, the 30th, we will be celebrating the return to school, and it will be uh, a different sort of return this year for our kids and our families and our teachers. And so we want to remember that and uh, do a back-to-school celebration in which we are praying for and encouraging and instilling with the message of hope and love and support those who are going back to school. So we want your pictures. We want pictures of all the kids, uh, our children, your children, uh, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, the next door neighbor's kids. And you don't have to be a member of Trinity Church to participate in this. Uh, Wherever you are, whoever you are that are participating and are are part of our online worship experience, send us your pictures this week. Uh, We'll be gathering those through uh, for a couple more weeks. Uh, We want to know for children their names and what grades they're going in into, first names only, and the grades they're going into, and uh, we want to see them as we pray for them on uh, August 30th. We also want our teachers uh, to send in photographs and let us know where you are teaching and what grade or what uh, subject matter you teach as well, because we definitely want to pray for you too. Uh, so you can mail those to, uh, to my email address or to the church's email address, both of which you can find on our Facebook page. Um, And then the last thing is that that week, the first uh, few days of September, we'll be putting together our new church directory, and those pictures uh, you have to come in and take, but friends, it is just, it is an awesome opportunity, because one, you get to help the rest of the church know who you are when they see your face, and, uh, and to be able to reflect that from the directory, and, and as an added bonus, you get a free 8 by 10. It doesn't cost you anything, just for coming and sitting down for 20 minutes, and you get a free picture of you, your family, your pets. Uh, Life Touch Now doesn't require you to get dressed up and look all official and churchy. Uh, you can wear your favorite team garb, your favorite Denny Hamlin an outfit, whatever it is that makes you comfortable and you want to be remembered in, uh, you are welcome to do that. So just sign up today. You can uh, get information from our uh, email that came out, uh, go online and make your appointment, or you can call the church office and Shannon will take care of it for you. Uh, Friends, I'm glad that you're here this morning uh, as we celebrate our connection. So as we begin to sing or prepare to sing, let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your spirit upon us this morning as we sing your praises, as we hear your word read and proclaimed. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill us. Redeem us. Sustain us. In the powerful name of the resurrected Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, our two songs this morning as we get started. God with us and it is well with my soul. And uh, let's stand and sing.
Friends, with that song, I neglected to mention in the announcements at the top that um, at the end of the service, we have a big announcement regarding the return to in-person worship, and we'll be sharing that with you after the service is concluded, or at the conclusion of the service. Um, as we enter into our prayer time this morning, I want to, uh, to give a, a word of uh, gratitude. We've talked about how today we celebrate the ministry of A Place of Miracles Cafe and our participation in that. Today's fruit on the altar is given um, by Pete Page um, in uh, an expression of gratitude. And uh, the fruit that's given here has for years, Rachel, do you have no, any idea how many years we have been uh, doing fruit instead of flowers here at Trinity? Four or five years. Uh, instead of putting flowers in the sanctuary on Sunday morning to the glory of God, we give fresh fruit. Uh, on Sunday, it is given um, as an expression of that glory to God and in memory or in honor or just because of folks and loved ones. Uh, but on Tuesday, it becomes food that feeds the hungry, uh, part of the homeless hungry, the um, hotel homeless, if you will, uh, that are um, served by the ministry of a place of miracles cafe. And so today we celebrate uh, that ministry with this expression of fruit. Friends, let us go into our time of prayer this morning. Almighty God, we give you thanks today for uh, bringing us together uh, wherever we might be in your beautiful, diverse creation. We give you thanks, O oh God, for calling us and summonsing us to be present with you today. And we are grateful, O oh Holy One, that as we gather, that we experience the connection of your church, your church universal. We thank you for the technology that allows us to do this in this season of COVID. We thank you, O oh Holy God, for the ministries that allow us to continue to be connected with your people throughout our communities, such as a place of miracles cafe. We thank you for the work that they do, O oh God, to feed the, the hotel homeless in our community and to care for them and to mentor them and encourage them. We pray for that community that struggles, O Holy One, to make ends meet from day to day and week to week and month to month, who in this season of economic distress are even more challenged and more pained to have a place to live and food to eat. And so we thank you, O God, that you have invited us to be a part of that ministry. And we thank you for the work that Melissa and her team do at A Place of Miracles. God, as we gather this morning, we pray for all of those who are struggling in this season. For your people that are losing um, unemployment benefits or they're being reduced or are facing evictions in the days ahead, oh God. For the hungry and the homeless. Provide them, oh Holy One, with the means to not just survive, but that they have enough of what they need, that they experience your love and your grace poured out upon them by the generous hearts, the embraces, the surrounding of love for these, your people. May they be encouraged. And may our leaders, O oh Holy One, see them and their plight May they intervene so that we avoid yet another pandemic of an economic sort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, this day for your church, that we may stay and continue to be by your guiding spirit focused on loving our neighbors, that our hearts are filled with compassion and that we have the, the courage to stand up and do what is right, to do justice and Act mercifully. And may we be grateful, O oh Holy One, for the blessings that you have given us, even in these challenging times, for the ways in which we learn to let go of the things that become stumbling blocks for us and embrace new opportunities before us. Lord, we pray for this church, Trinity, 
And for all the local churches in our circle, O Holy One, as we seek ways to continue to be connected and to maintain the connection of your Holy Spirit. A spirit that redeems us and sustains us and encourages us and teaches us and guides us from day to day and week to week. May we be instruments of your grace as well as recipients of it. Lord, we pray this morning for those who are on our hearts and minds, those who um, we have lifted up today, including George and Don. Uh, we also have prayers for Betty Hart, uh, the Bailey family, that would be David and Angela, uh, the Reed family, Dennis Blackwell, Catherine uh, Bosdell, and Norman Willis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And hear us now, O holy God, as we come together in one voice to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we're really fortunate this morning to have with us uh, Vicki and Ruth, who are uh, playing uh, a bell duet. They'll be accompanied by Rachel, and uh, they're playing this morning, O oh Lord Most Holy. Ladies, welcome. We're glad you're here today. Ruth, it's good to see you.
Is this one of those Sundays when I'm just supposed to stop, not, not even start now? <laughs> hmm. Music is speaking to me this morning. Um, so let's hope the scriptures do as well. Friends, today we begin uh, the eighth chapter of Romans. We'll spend the next three Sundays talking about Paul's declaration that nothing, nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. An appropriate message for this time and this season. But today we begin at the beginning. In the very first verse, the very first verse, there is nothing now. Therefore, there is nothing now. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I want us to sit with that for a moment and just to think about what that means for us, that there is no condemnation. No condemnation. For those of us in Christ Jesus. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the understanding of this word. From Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 6. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, God condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. A man walks into a bar. (laughs) A man walks into a bar and orders a whiskey. And the bartender serves it up and the man takes his whiskey and he goes and sits outside. I've got my pages out of order. And he goes and sits outside on the bench in front of the bar. And while he's sitting there enjoying his drink, this nun comes by and she gives him this nasty scowl and she says of him, how can you pollute your soul with the devil's drink? It's not the devil, sister. It's just whiskey. But it's sinful and it's wicked. And so the man asks her, how do you know that it's so bad? Have you ever tasted whiskey? Of course not. My mother's superior and my sisters told me how evil drink is. But how do they know, the man asked. Have they ever had a drink? And back and forth and back and forth they argue with one another. But at last, the sister relents, the nun relents. And she says, well, I suppose, I suppose if I were to try just a a little sip of whiskey, I would better understand how it corrupts the soul. But it wouldn't do for any of my sisters to come by and see me sitting out here. So will you get me one in a teacup? The man agrees and he goes inside to the bartender and he says, I need two whiskeys, but I need one in a teacup. The bartender slams his hand down on the bar and says, is that nun here again? (laughs) I wonder. (laughs) I wonder. What was more sinful for the nun, her thirst for drink that she knew was forbidden, or her willingness to lie for it? And I wonder if that's the power that sin has over us, that we would do things and say things and then justify ourselves to have what we want, even though we know we shouldn't. 
The eighth chapter of Romans, which we have just been, been introduced into, is a response to a dilemma that Paul raises back in the seventh chapter. He says, For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. That's something like, I know I shouldn't say those things about my neighbor, but sometimes I just say things without thinking. While well, once I even said something derogatory about a member of the church, once I even said something mean-spirited about the preacher, sometimes my self-righteousness gets the best of me. Says Paul, now if I do what I do not want, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. Here's the problem. The problem that Paul is speaking to and is trying to address in this powerful eighth chapter of Romans, it's the problem that you and I face and every other human being face and struggles with sin. Doing the things that we know we should not do. Sin, the evil in this world that causes harm, harm to others, harm to ourselves, harm to God's wonderful, beautiful creation. Sin, those actions that separate us from God. To name a few, bigotry and hatefulness, selfishness, arrogance, lust, violence, greed, anger, idolatry, jealousy, factions, cliques, envy, and things like these. The last half dozen coming from a list of Paul's in the fifth chapter of Galatians. Now know that when Paul speaks of being in the flesh, he's not referring to sexual sins. That's not what he's talking about. In the flesh refers to in, in human form, in human nature. In the flesh is what humans do. And it sits in opposition in Paul's theology to in the spirit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. I think this gets complicated for us Christians sometimes because we can be tempted or even challenged and, and sometimes we'll rationalize or justify those few and far between times when we want, like the nun, to preserve our image and have our teacup too. But friends, hear the good news. Out of the message translation, the first two verses of chapter 8, with the arrival of Jesus the Messiah, that faithful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous, low-lying black cloud. A new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's all I have to do is ask. That's wonderful. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. But I wonder, my friends, do we grasp the depth of the gift, this radical nature of grace that Paul is talking about? See, our culture, right? Our culture is a can-do culture. We admire those who claim to be self-sufficient. We looked up to those who are self-made successes. We have a pull-yourself-up-by-your-own-bootstraps even kind of faith. So to begin with the statement that there is something we cannot do is to swim against that tide of our culture, to admit that we are helpless in the face of our own sin is shameful in our culture. It's almost un-American. Yet this is at the heart of Paul's argument. And to skip over this, to skip over this makes everything that follows empty and powerless. It's only by diving into the depths of Paul's plea, who will rescue me? That's what he asked, who's going to rescue me? That we begin to experience the glory of what Christ has done for us. This gift, Paul says, is no condemnation. No condemnation, it's no judgment, it's freedom. It's the freedom to live 
really live now. That's the gift. Yes, it is eternal life. But that life begins now in the freedom of the grace of Jesus Christ, in the freedom of the one that God raised from the dead, who gave God his life back. Christ gives life to your mortal bodies, Paul says in verse 11, to your mortal bodies, meaning we don't have to wait, meaning that this isn't about some other day, it's not about the next life, it's about this life, this day, right here, right now. Mm. Singer-songwriter, Christian singer-songwriter Jimmy Needham has a sweet song that I love. I've um, known it, been familiar with it for a long time. It's called uh, Forgiven and Loved. And in this song, he sings of the undeserved, um, unearnable gift of this grace that we're talking about. Now, I'm not much of a singer, but the song is in my heart today, this weekend. Uh, so I'm going to sing a little bit of the chorus for us. Oh, I tried and tried to rectify my hopeless situation. And I bought the lie I still had work to do. Now I'm working nine to five like I can earn my own salvation. But there is no condemnation in you. And a little bit later he adds, Oh, he died, he died to rectify my hopeless situation And his blood commands my guilt to leave Now on Calvary I stand, empty pockets, open hands For there is no condemnation for me No, I tried Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, again. <laughs> Not for the singing, but for the message. There is no condemnation for me. There's no condemnation for you either, friends. I mean, that's the gift. And it's free, and it's for each one of us. There's just one thing that we have to do to receive it, and that is that we have to accept it. To claim this freedom, to, to claim and live this, this life that Paul is describing for us, we have to respond to the invitation. There is now no condemnation, writes Paul, for those who are in Christ. Maybe one way to think about this being in Christ is to, uh, and this, this dilemma that we have to work our way through is to contrast being living a life that is self-directed versus one that is spirit-directed. Living guided only by self leads to death, says Paul. But guided by the Spirit is to know the fullness of life. Living by the Spirit requires a surrender of self. And it takes an admission that you and I are powerless in the face of our own sin. Commentator Blair Allison Pogue says that sometimes we want to use our faith, we want to, to use Jesus as like a, a spiritual booster. You know, we need a little Jesus, we need a little something extra to get us over the hump. But the problem, friends, the problem with that is that we are the hump. The very thing that needs to be moved out of the way for the Spirit to take up residence in us so that we can be in Christ and live in the Spirit-filled life is ourselves. Listen to Paul as he concludes this, this section of Scripture, beginning with verse 9, verse 9 through 11. Let me get my Bible. That's okay. There we are. Paul says, but you are not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit. Friends, that speaks to us, right? Jesus followers, disciples of Jesus, you're not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the God who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies 
as through his spirit that dwells in you. In a recent article in her From the Cottage series, Diana Butler Bass speaks of centering in God. She's talking about how essential it is in, uh, to making it in these days of the, the pandemic trilogy, COVID-19, coronavirus, and economic distress and social unrest. How necessary it is for us to center in God. And she describes the thinking of the late Marcus Borg, how centering in our lives in God produces good fruit. Friends, to center in God is Paul's being in Christ. It is to ground our very being in Christ Jesus, to live alive, to live spirit-directed lives, such lives characterized by compassion, freedom and courage, and gratitude. Lives characterized by compassion, freedom and courage, and gratitude. These are the fruit. Observes Bass cultivating the fruits of compassion, freedom and courage and gratitude just seems like the right thing to do in this season. Compassion is neighbor-directed love. Freedom and courage are the power to resist anxiety and fear. And gratitude, gratitude awakens our senses to gift and wonder. Compassion, freedom and courage and gratitude, these are the fruit, the fruit that others witness. Fruit that impacts and transforms other people's lives too. To live a spirit-directed life, to be in Christ, isn't just about our own personal spiritual well-being. The fruits of this life feed others. And says Bass, I can't think of any four things I long for or that I need, that we need more right now than compassion, freedom and courage, and gratitude. The altar fruit this morning is both... When we talk about the sacraments, for example, we talk about the uh, Holy Communion being both the sign and the act of God's grace. This fruit today is both the sign and the act of a spirit-filled life. It's symbolic in the nature of, of being placed on the altar to glorify God. Pieces of fruit, symbolic of this, this theme that our spirit-directed lives produce good fruit. But this fruit will actually feed people. When it goes to feed the hotel homeless, the hungry, on Tuesday. This is what we're talking about today. This spirit-directed life, it's not just for our personal well-being. It's not for our eternal salvation. It's about impacting and changing other lives right now. Right here. See, friends, by the grace of God... We are not saved for our sake, but for Christ, for the work and the mission of Jesus Christ. As he put it, we're not here to be served, but to serve. By the grace of God, not by anything you or I have done or could possibly do, but solely by God's choice, directed by love so abundant, has that air, that dark cloud been cleared from us. By the grace of God, not by anything you or I have done or could possibly do, but by God's abundant love are we saved so that, so that we become alive now in our mortal human bodies to live fruitful, spirit-directed lives. This is what connects us in this season. This is what it means to be in Christ, loving what God loves, participating in God's passion for a different sort of world. This is why we are connected, and this is what we are saved for. Amen and amen. 
Friends, as the, uh, the praise team comes to, to sing our final song this morning, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your word this morning. The word from scripture, the proclamation, the word and message and song. Give us the courage to accompany the freedom that you have given us to act on the mercy and compassion that you have entrusted to us, that you have poured out upon us. May our hearts and our minds be open to living the spirit-guided life in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. <laughs> Humbleness is left untasted You can live your life Lead yourself Yeah That's a tip from my mistake Exactly what it does it take To win you got to come in last place Live your life you got to lose it Cause all the losers Get a crown I get down Many lives right we have fun here too spirit guided spirit led fun on Sunday mornings so friends here's the good word for you we will be resuming in-person worship starting Wednesday August the 19th at 7 p.m. and here's the deal this service just like it is on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Uh, online will continue just as it is for the foreseeable future. Here, because we have no congregation, we are able to sing and celebrate in the manner that we have this morning. But because we'll have a congregation in, in the building when we resume in-person worship, there will be, it will be very different than what we are accustomed to. We will maintain social distancing at all times. We will wear masks at all times. Even when I'm preaching, I will wear a mask. We will disinfect the, the sanctuary and our travel spaces before and after every service, and we will have no singing. These are the conditions by which we can resume in-person worship. 
The particulars and the details will be coming out tomorrow in an email to you. Uh, you will need to register in advance, several days in advance, uh, so that we know how many people to prepare for and uh, seating arrangements as we need to make them. One thing you should know is that on these Wednesday nights, and we will probably do uh, four of them, uh, two at the end of August and the first two Wednesday nights in September, uh, at each of those services, uh, we will celebrate and you will receive Holy Communion. And that too will be very different than we are accustomed to. Uh, but we feel like it is time. And we are celebrating the fact that we have the capacity and the ability, we have the, the team that has um, prepared this and planned this and thought this out. We have the guidance from our bishop and our conference to lead us and direct us. And we're excited about being able to return you to in-person worship. Again, this service will continue just as it is, uh, but we'll be inviting you to come back to in-person worship here at Trinity starting Wednesday night, August the 19th at 7 p.m. Mm. Friends, receive this blessing. May the Spirit of God be with you today. May the Spirit of God guide you and lead you. May you experience the fruit of living that spirit-guided life. May your heart be full of compassion. May you feel the, the freedom that releases you from anxiety and fear. And may gratitude and joy fill your heart and may you share this with others. May you bear witness to the Christ in you, to those you meet along the way. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Remember to wear a mask if you must go out and wash your hands many times each day. Go in peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.